Aventura. What exactly is an Aventura and why is it called an Aventura? It's an Aventura. Aventura means adventure. That was a Spanish name. Uh, the name was given to the airplane by Carlos Pereira, the original founder of the Aventura line. This airplane happens to be an Aventura II, which stands for two-seater. We also make an Aventura UL single seat and a high-performance single seat also. Now, Carlos, when he got into it, though, he just didn't start building this airplane. He had a lot of experience behind it when he first Yes, he did. He came from the old Buccaneer line with all the folks that you and I are familiar with as they grew the Buccaneers from the XA through the, the B2B. And he had the experience there. And then in 1994, he started designing a replacement for the Buccaneer that had a better hull on it, uh, was more seaworthy and more aerodynamic. And in 95, he released the Aventura single seat. And that, of course, captured the EAA amphibian design of the year. I've always liked uh, light airplane flying, although my background is commercial and military aviation. I was in uh, the consulting business with an office in New York when we had the 911 crash, and that kind of stopped aviation. So I retired and went to volunteer work at uh, different museums here in Florida, helping Tom Riley and the Valiant Air Command. And these folks at Rockledge wanted me to spend some time helping them. They invited me over, and that's how I became involved. What are you to the company now? Um, I'm in the company. I'm the general manager of the company. We took the company over from uh, Greg Arnett and, and uh, Carlos Pereira when it was Arnett Pereira. And so we've operated the company for the last four years. What kind of facility do you have there? We've, we're operating out of five hangars. We have a major production hangar with offices and four other hangars that we use from everything from fiberglass to painting. So basically you're not uh, subletting any of this out, all this is done in-house? It's all been done in-house up until this year. We now are, are subcontracting the fiberglass work. Now, this aircraft, as I mentioned, it goes back into the Buccaneer uh, history and is it basically a replacement for the Buccaneer since it isn't available. What type of differences are there between this airplane and, and the Buck? The major difference in the design between this airplane and the Buck is the hull. This is a tunnel concave hull as opposed to a flat bottom. It's got a very long rocking chair nose on it. And this long nose in the tunnel concave hull prevents pitch pull and flipping in the water. This is the only amphibian I know that you can land on speed in the water with the gear down and not flip over. So it's a very safe hull. And because it's tunnel concave, it generates its own friction for taking off on slick water. And also because of its tunnel concave, it cut slices into the water in landing with the three skags rather than bouncing on the water on the flat bottom. Now, is this being offered as a, an experimental aircraft or a kit aircraft? How's it coming out into the market? This is a kit aircraft produced by Aero Adventure. It is in the experimental class. However, it does meet the criteria for light sport aircraft. Now, the kit itself, then, how is it coming to the customer? The customer gets the kit in a quick build form. Uh, it's pretty much an assembly type kit. There are some fabrication things that do have to be done, but primarily the fiberglass is done for you, so there's no fiberglass work. There is no welding. That's all done for you. Uh, the fabric is sewn upstairs in our number one hanger. The customer is allowed to pick the color and the pattern and it's sewn for them. As you know, it's just slip-on covers. Now, construction-wise, it's a bolt-together construction where basically there's no welding or uh, a little bit of riveting, but no welding or anything like that. That's right. Now, what type of construction is used in the wings then? The wings are aluminum tubes, cross-braced and with aircraft cable wires in there to strengthen them. So that's just a bolt-together also. Now, this is an amphibian, though. It's not just a, a straight uh, hull design. What type of, uh, how do we get from the gears where they are now, the gear leg down, what type of uh, retract system? Are it's, it's a very unique system and it works very well. You have a Johnson bar that's in the middle, which comes standard with the airplane, and you pull the Johnson bar back, and when you do that, this main gear repositions itself to the up position, and the tail wheel repositions itself forward. 
So you're landing on the water with the gear up. And that's a, a one, like one lever does all of that? One lever, it's a, like a nautica cam. You just pull it, it goes over the center and you push it down and it's very easy. It raises the gear up. Very simple. Now, how strong is the gear itself? Like coming in out of the water, this is a fairly heavy airplane. What's it, around 1,200 pound mark? This airplane maximum gross weight allowed is 1430 with a big engine, the 912S. So, like gear wise, uh, fairly strong is it? 4130 chromoly steel? It is. It's 4130 chromoly steel, and we have it, of course, heat treated, and then we have it nickel plated. So it's a very strong gear. It has just a little bit of spring in it. And the tires, of course, are, are low pressure tires, which give you a nice soft landing. Okay. Now what about uh, fuel capacity on board? The standard uh, fuel tank on this airplane is 12 gallons. You can upgrade it to 18 gallons, which most of our customers do. I know you're going to ask about the fuel burn rate. With the 912 ULS and the three-bladed prop, it burns about four gallons an hour at cruise, which is 80 miles an hour. Now what about the control systems on it? Do we standard three-axis control? Yes, it's standard three-axis control. Of course, you have your elevators and you have your ailerons on it. And then you have your rudder pedals down here that are hard to see, but left and right. right. Also, I might mention that the airplane is tailwheel steerable with the rudders. Now, the flaps on this airplane are electric. So they're electric flaps up and down. One of the changes we've made We've gone to dual throttles, so that you have, on the left and the right side, you have a throttle for each of the pilots. So the airplane is truly dual control. You have the dual brakes, the dual throttles, the dual controls, and the dual rudders. Now, uh, trim uh, auto? I'm sorry? Trim tab? Yes, we do have a trim tab right between the seat. So you can manually trim it, uh, level, and flight hands off. What type of uh, uh, takeoff distance would you need, for example, on water and, and uh, again on land? It's a little bit longer on water, but it's within 25 feet of the same. On a standard day, let's say there's two people in here at a moderate weight, you're going to take off at about 200 to 250 feet. In water, it's going to be 250 to 300 feet, and that's from a dead stop. And a climb rate with the off? The climb rate with two people with the 912 ULS, and a lot of this depends on the motor, because you can put a 582 on it or work your way all the way up to the, the 914 if you'd like. But with the 912, I'm going to say 700 feet per minute at a moderate weight. And the cruise is coming in around 80 miles an hour? 80 miles an hour, standard cruise at four gallons. You can cruise at 90 or 95 if you'd like, or you can bring the power back at 65% and cruise at 75 miles an hour. And what does the stall rate come in at? If you have uh, two people in the airplane and you have your flaps down in the landing configuration, you're going to stall at 43 miles an hour. And, uh, on, uh, 42, what 43. We, what were we looking for an approach speed? Uh, the approach speed is going to be at 60 miles an hour. Now, how many of these are actually out and flying on the market now? We've got just over 120 of them out flying right now in this configuration. Now, with it being, it, its heritage being the Buccaneer style of aircraft, are you able to supply, uh, I mean, there's a lot of Buccaneer owners out there, are you able to supply parts and pieces for the old Bucs? Yes, we are. We have all of the old uh, bowls for the hulls from the very beginning, XA Buck, all the way through the B2B. We have all the fabric patterns, we can replace the fabric. We have the drawings and the uh, jigs, if you will, to manufacture all the replacement parts. So if there's some Buccaneers out there, and each week we're getting orders for replacement parts, because the Buccaneers are starting to show their age. Yeah, I mean, the, I think the last one, but it's got to be like 10 years since they, they produced one. The last Buccaneer was produced in 96. And we, since we have many customers up north, including Canada, we just received a B2A order for fabric just before we left for the show. If somebody wanted to get a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you? We have the factory located at Rockledge, Florida, which is on the east coast just south of the Kennedy Space Center. You can, uh, we'll be there from Monday through Saturday, six days a week. You can give us a call. Area code is 321-635-8005 or go to our website. Our www website is csea-plane.com. C-plane.com.
Thank you very much for your time. Dave, thank you so much.